happy Easter. It's Easter Sunday and kind of a different kind of Easter, but in a way kind of like our pastor said today in our online church, kind of like uh, the way it was for the original disciples when they were locked away on Easter Easter Day, what became Easter Sunday, and out of fear. So a lot of similarities there. Well, today I've, uh, I've got a new video for you. I did a grand tour of the space downstairs for the layout to show you the layout where it is now in progress and basically the whole layout of the place and uh, some of the features of the room and also to introduce some of the other projects I might be uh, working on here. I'm, I'm going to start in on in this next week and now that the, the taxes are all done and hopefully my office is, is more cleaned up from that. One of the other things I've been doing and this is kind of neat. Uh, there's a lot of interesting, uh, obviously neat for railroad freaks, probably not anybody else. I like watching paint dry. But there's a, there are a lot of videos online, of uh, well-done videos of cab rides and locomotives and trains from around the world. And one of the most interesting ones is a whole lot of videos from Switzerland, which is uh, really kind of a mecca for people that are interested in trains. They have a, a lot of railroads in Switzerland, and a lot of interesting railroads. And the one I've been I've been looking at here this week, it's really famous. It's 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 uh, right here, the Ration Railway. Um, it's a privately owned system. It's not uh, part of SBV, the, the Swiss National Railways. Uh, mostly narrow gauge, meter gauge, and it's fascinating. They run through a lot of the mountainous areas of Switzerland, and you can go on and, and watch cab rides on like the Glacier Express and the uh, Bernina Pass route and everything. And it's, it's really amazing because Switzerland is not an easy place to build railroads with all the mountains. And narrow gauge is easier to build in those kind of circumstances, but it's a very modern narrow gauge railroad, meter gauge. 39.4-inch uh, gauge was substantially smaller than our standard gauge of 4 feet 8 and a half inches. But it's amazing to look at the engineering and, and the, the whole quality of the operation. Uh, like you'd expect from the Swiss, it's an immaculately maintained railroad, and uh, it's interesting to see the operation in the cab. And by the way, if you see this shot inside the cab, that thing that looks like a steering wheel in front of the engineer is it's really not a steering wheel it's actually the throttle in the electric locomotives most of the electric most locomotives on that line are electrically powered and uh, by turning it clockwise or counterclockwise the engineer is able to increase or decrease the voltage going to the traction motors another interesting thing is because of the steep gradients they have to use there there are sections of their main line which actually are a cog railway and there's what there's down the middle of the track there's this long, like, rolled-out gear. It's called a rack. Think of it like a, instead of a circular gear, it's just a long, linear gear. And on the drive axles of the locomotive, there's a pinion gear that engages that rack. So when they get to the steeper gradient portions, usually above about 3%, they need the additional adhesion that that rack provides. And you can see them engage and disengage the rack as they go up the hill. So it's pretty interesting. So if you want to look at that, go into YouTube and just look for Rachin Railway and uh, uh, go to the cab ride section and there's lots and lots to watch. It's an interesting way to pass the time. Well, with that, I'm going to start up the uh, video here and go to transition. It's, I shot it in HD. Uh, hopefully it's not too big a file for YouTube to take, but uh, if so, uh, next time I'll go with standard definition. And uh, If you have any problems with it, please let me know and I'll, I can always reshoot it. So with that, here comes the tour of the layout. Okay, so this is the introduction to the space that I created for the model railroad. And the first indication are, is that you're going to someplace special is this sign right over the stairway here. It's a reproduction of an old railroad station sign. You go down the steps, trying not to drop the camera. This is the man cave that I created here for this, my model railroad room. And you can see there's a definite railroad motif to everything here. These posters on each side of the television set are recreations of classic Union Pacific Railroad travel posters in the 1930s that Beth and Chris gave to me when I retired. And then over here are some more railroad posters that are really kind of special to me. One, because my grandfather was an engineer on the Baltimore, Ohio, and my uncle worked for the Baltimore, Ohio. And on the lower left, that's a poster from the Fair of the Iron Horse in the 1920s. It was big celebration of the Baltimore, Ohio's 100th anniversary, and the B&O was the first common carrier railroad in North America. 
And this is kind of special. This is a recreation of a lamp, a table lamp from a dining car of the Orient Express. I just thought that was kind of cool to have that in the railroad room. And then down here I also created a space for Kathy to do her watercolor painting. So this is kind of her little little studio for watercolor painting. And this is the railroad space. I'm going to slowly pan here so you can see it. It covers about 600 square feet. And you can see the scenic backdrop is already up and the supporting bench work is in. And then over there above the railroad are emblems of my favorite railroads with Union Pacific in the middle and then railroads that were absorbed in the Union Pacific. And if we take a walk around this way, I'll go around the sectional couch here, over into here, I'll show you a few more things about the railroad room in this introduction. I'm walking now along the side of the railroad, and this is the workshop that I had the folks build for me when we finished off the basement. So it's got an airbrush booth, got my workbench and chair, and a whole bunch of kits that I built or will build. I've been saving this stuff up for 40 years. And then around here is more storage. And they put in a deep basin sink and storage here where I can clean out my airbrushes and brushes. You can see I've got paints out there in the, in the rack. And then coming around here out of the workshop, of course you got the essential refrigerator for a man space. And this is a, this is the bathroom. But what I wanted to point out here is this plaque from the London Midland the Scottish Railroad, and it says, "Will passengers please refrain from using this water closet while the train is in the station?" This was actually made in 1865, and I found it an antique online, and I thought that was really kind of a neat thing to put on the bathroom door. A friend of mine is a British model railroader. So I'm going to walk around here a little further, give you more of a sense of the layout. And I'm going to try to post, this is a, this is a diagram of the track plan of the layout that you can see here. And we're standing right where it says upside down there, town A, right about in there. And you see the columns and that's the general track plan. But I'm going to walk around this way and give you a kind of a feel for the layout. There's bookcases with a bunch of my railroad books in it. Of course here I've got tools and supplies for building the railroad. Obviously this is a work in progress. And looking at the backdrop here, now we're walking up in the center of the layout. And this is where we're going to have several towns or a town located and some mountain scenery. And you can see this is going around here. This track, this layout will have 160 feet of visible mainline run and about 25 feet of staging yard. This thing standing on the sawhorses in the center, this is one of the yard throats for the staging yard. You can see over here the braces. I've got the track already fixed to it. And what I've got is standing up on edge, like we build aircraft parts, I've got a, a jig here and I'm working on installing all the wiring for the switch machines. You can see my diagrams there. And the switch machines are all set up with, with uh, double pole, double throw relays attached to them to their contacts so that I can selectively route power to any one of the nine staging track yards. And I'm building these modules before putting them on the layout so I'll build both yard throats as modules and then add them to the layout later when I get them all done. This is where I'm doing some work on that. Kind of a portable workbench. And then finally I'm going to go around here walking around this way, around the layout. Now, now we're going backstage on the layout. Think of this behind, like backstage behind the theater. This is where the staging yard is going to be located. It'll be an eight track staging yard with one run through track. And this will be where I will stage trains for entry to the scenic portion of the layout. Kind of like actors wait backstage for their entry into the play. I'm going to move this stool out of the way here for a second. We'll go around this way. And then we're coming back out into the scenic portion of the layout. Now this portion of the layout is going to be a, a major town. It's going to have a freight yard and a bunch of industries. I've got a, a backdrop mountain scene taped up here and that'll be one thing that I'll 
do some episodes about. I'm going to try some attempts at background painting. This is a, a whole series that I used Adobe Photoshop to put together and actually it's it's mirrored image side to side so you can see it looks the same but I'll change enough details that won't be obvious. This is supposed to represent the Central Valley of California where you can always see mountains off in the distance. And this, this is a smaller version, the original version of that backdrop mountain scene. And then this is another thing I'm going to do in some of the videos. I've got the itch to start building one of these laser kits again. I've built one and they're really they're really nice. So I'll go over how to, to build a, an HO laser kit. And I'll also show some other structures here. And I'll just give you a, a taste of some of that. These are some of the other structures I've built over here on the shelf waiting to be put on a layout. And I'll talk about each of them separately in another video when I start building the structure. But you can you can see some of them here. Some are completely scratch built like that big billboard or the grain elevator down here on this shelf below. That's all completely scratch built. And then some are detailed modified kits like this freight or produce terminal that you see here. So this is the scene of the crime and uh, hopefully the next episode I'll probably start on that uh, station kit. Well, I hope you enjoyed that tour of the layout room and uh, got to see what I'm working on down there. And the, the architecture is kind of interesting. I pointed out uh, some of the features I built in. One of the things that I didn't mention is that the, the man, the company that did the remodeling for me, had never done a space specifically to hold a model railroad. So he thought it was kind of curious some of the things I wanted to do. And this this 70-year-old uh, guy wanted to create a space for trains in his basement. But once we started on the project, uh, he really got into it and thought it was really kind of fun to build something like that. And he actually made a bunch of suggestions that, that made the, the plan even better. Uh, additional electrical outlets on the columns that he boxed in and some of the architectural features he used that kind of emulated the, the style of railroad stations of the turn of the last century. A lot of the beadboard uh, styling and little detail flourishes he put in. And it, it kind of made it all, all together neater. But the final thing, you know, people would say, well, that, that's quite an ambitious project. You know, you're 72 years old, soon to be 73. I mean, taking on a project of, of that magnitude at, at this age. But as I said, I've been wanting to do this for 40 years and moving around. And uh, it's, you know, not always been easy to have a layout and indulge my hobby. And, you know, something like this, I guess <laughs> this is like somebody said, optimism is planting an acorn when you're 72 years old. So, uh, you know, this, this, like most model railroads, this will never be completely done, but it's the, it's the building of it that's the fun. So it may seem like a crazy project to take on at my age, but I'm, I'm really enjoying it. So until next time, uh, have a, have a good week and probably another week there'll be another video. Bye.